Hi everyone, this is Jan Wilczek from thewolfsound.com and today we're going to talk about what sound actually is. We need to understand the phenomenon of sound in order to be able to record it and then process it. From a physical perspective, sound is a mechanical wave that propagates in an elastic medium. Mechanical wave means that particles are involved and wave results from the particles interaction. An elastic medium is a medium, an area, a space such that it allows the interaction of particles. So particles have to actually exist in that medium. The simplest example may be air, but uh, another possibilities are also allowed like liquids, uh, for example, water, other gases, or even uh, physical objects in a stable state like concrete. Every sound begins with a vibrating object. The simplest one that we can imagine uh, or the one that we know the best from reality are human vocal cords. Our speech results in, uh, in a way from applying tension to our vocal cords, which are then moved by the air that flows through them. That way, the vocal cords vibrate and cause the air surrounding them to move as well. The particles that are being moved in turn move other particles and in this way a wave propagates. Because if you look at this picture, the particles that were initially moved hit against other particles that are then being uh, transferred further and hit other particles and so on. Uh, this disturbance in the medium travels until it reaches, for example, our ears, where uh, the particles interact with our tympani membrane. Then through a series of transformations, these vibrations are uh, transformed into a neural signal, which is through neurons transported directly into our brain, where it is interpreted, so we know that what sound it is and we can somehow react to it. The sound uh, propagating can also uh, reach another receiver, such as microphone. And here particles fall onto the diaphragm and cause it to move, which again, through a series of transformations, is changed into electric voltage, uh, actually in a change of electric voltage. This voltage can then be measured and through uh, an analog to digital converter, it can be transformed into a form suitable for a computer to read. So, for example, a series of binary numbers. These binary numbers can be somehow processed and then can be output to a digital to analog converter, which changes this binary representation here to, again, an analog representation in terms of voltage. This voltage then steers the loudspeaker uh, and actually its membrane, which under the influence of the voltage changes its position and analogously uh, as the vocal cords before, the moving membrane hits partic particles of air, which in turn hit other particles. And in this way, sound waves starts propagating again and we just close this circle. If we want to uh, think in, term, in terms of sound, whatever the medium is, whatever it's a mechanical wave or uh, it's a voltage or it's a binary number, we can always depict the wave as a phenomenon that is displaced from its equilibrium state to a maximum position and then back again to the minimum position or maximum in the other direction. Let's look at it here. Here we may see that the peak of the wave corresponds to the maximum density of the particles. When the sound travels through 
an air medium, we uh, are faced with uh, changing pressure. And so on this axis right here, we could write a unit of Pascals. Then the lowest density in air corresponds to the maximum in the other direction, so the, the minimum. When we look right here, uh, we can see that here could be the peak of the electric voltage and here, here the minimum value that we observe. The same applies to a binary number. We could set here a maximum possible binary number that uh, we want our sound to be represented at. And uh, successfully we store a series of such binary numbers that represent how our sound is changing over time. Such digital numbers are called samples because we are only able to store the value of this wave, this amplitude, at a particular point in time. And the process of recording such samples is called samplings. And sampling occurs at the regular intervals in time. That was a very short and brief introduction to what sound is. And as we may see, it's not that complicated to understand. The topic of sampling will be presented in the next video, which I highly encourage you to wait for. That's all for today. I hope you liked the video. If you want to see more and know more about sound, please subscribe and let me know what are the topics you think are important and interesting to you. That's all for me. Take care.